Hi friends, it's Rainy, and we are here for my favorite TBR of the year, and that is Victober. Yay! <laughs> so I have been seeing everybody putting up their Victober TBRs in the past couple of days, and I thought, oh my gosh, is it that time already? Really, I mean, I knew the announcement came out, and I and you know I usually start looking for the TBRs once it came out, but I've been so busy, I just didn't realize that we are, in fact, coming up to the last week in September, and that makes me panic a little bit, I'm not going to lie. I have a uh, show, I'm in a, in a theater production at the beginning of October, and that means that I need to have my lines ready, and we're going to be going into tech week here uh, soon, well, like this week. <laughs> But I really, really want to participate in Victober, so I'm going to do a TBR, and I am going to try my darndest to keep up with everybody and to participate as much as possible. Hopefully not to the detriment of my play and my castmates. Let's just get right into it. Of course, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you know what Victober is. It is a month dedicated to Victorian literature, which is arguably one of the most um, prolific and uh, exceptional eras of literature in all of history, I would say. So, um, Katie from Books and Things, Kate from Kate Howe, Lucy from Lucy the Reader, and Ange from Beyond the Pages are the hostesses of this readathon, and they are all lovely ladies and are so knowledgeable about the Victorian literature that I can't even begin to know all the things that they seem to know. But um, they have just been a tremendous source for me for the past couple of years on uh, Victorian literature, and I've read way more uh, Victorian authors than I even ever knew existed because of them. So, so yeah, and their challenges will kind of reflect that there are people out there that I never even knew of. So, let's get right into the challenges and I will stop rambling, okay? Okay. Lucy's challenge is to read an underrated Victorian work that was published in the same year as your favorite Victorian work. And for this, I actually have two, <laughs> because my favorite work, probably of all times, is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, which is also one of the group reads for this Victober. And um, I mean, I'm going to consult my list to make sure I get the dates right. Um, Importance of Being Earnest was uh, first performed in 1895. So, and when I searched Wikipedia, I came up with um, Sylvie and Bruno by Lewis Carroll. And Lewis Carroll is, of course, Alice in Wonderland fame. And he's a little nonsensical, and he's really kind of hilarious. And I would really like to read something else by Lewis Carroll. I've never read anything else from him but the Alice books. There was um, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, and I've read those, but I've never read uh, Sylvie and Bruno. Didn't even know it existed. And um, I found a copy of it on Scribd, and I read the blurb, and it sounds really fun. Um, it sounds like it's both nonsensical fairyland type things, and also social commentary on things like marriage and religion and uh, politics, I mean, politics of those days, which I'm sure I won't really understand, but, um, but yeah, it just, it sounds really cool and I'm looking forward to reading it and I'm glad I found it on Scribd. My other favorite Victorian work is a more recent favorite from last Victober, and that is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And this was published in well, it was published in serial, serialization, so when it finished its serialization, thus becoming the novel we know, 
It was in, consulting my notes again, oh, 1866. So, when I searched Wikipedia, which we all know that is, you know, where a lot of people get their information, which, who knows, um, but I came up with Miss Marjorie Banks by uh, Margaret Oliphant. And I've heard of Margaret Oliphant before from Katie at Books and Things, but I've never actually read anything by her. So, um, and again, I found a copy of it on Scribd. And when I looked at that blurb, it said that Miss Marjorie Banks is sometimes compared to a successor of Jane Austen's Emma which when I read that, I was like, uh, yes, I am on board for that. <laughs> because Emma is possibly my favorite Jane Austen. I hesitate to say that because there's, I mean, there's six works of Jane Austen and all of them are pretty darn good. But we're not here to talk about Jane Austen. But I don't know anything else about Miss Marjorie Banks other than that, and I am here for it. So next we have Angie's Challenge, which is to read a work by a female author in the Victorian era, and bonus points if she's a new to you author. Now, the last one that I talked about, um, Miss Marjorie Banks by Margaret Oliphant, that would work for this prompt. So right off the bat, I would be, you know, picking off that challenge, but I'm also, and, and I would also get the bonus points because I've never read uh, Margaret Oliphant before. However, I am going to use an audio book of Adam Bede by George Eliot for this prompt. Now, George Eliot is not new to me. I read Middlemarch last year, um, but Kate from um, Kate Howe and some other booktubers are going to be hosting a knit and listen to Adam Bede this month. And I don't knit, I, I do crochet. I, in fact, I'm crocheting a baby blanket at the moment. I am going to try to crochet myself a Hufflepuff scarf while I listen to Adam Bede. Sounds like a perfect pairing to me. <laughs> so, that is my female author for this Victober. Even though George Eliot is not new to me, I've only read one thing by her, so I would kind of like to start learning more about her. Middle March was about middle of the road for me. I liked it, but it was a little bit of a slog at times to get through. Um, and I've heard that about George Eliot, but I'm hoping that listening to it while crocheting will be a lovely way to uh, in, ingest her creativity. <laughs> so Katie from Books and Things Challenge is to read a Victorian novel or Victorian work that is less than 250 pages or more than 500 pages. Now I'm sure there are some works that I already picked that are more than 500 pages. Um, Victorian works tend to be kind of long, um, especially Middlemarch was pretty long, so uh, I'm expecting Adam Bede to be. It looked like it was about a 30-hour audiobook, so, so that would probably work. However, I've recently purchased a book from the Penguin Clothbound Classics collection, and I am super, super, super excited to read it, and it is under 250 pages, and that is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I have discovered that Elizabeth Gaskell might possibly be one of my favorite Victorian authors. <laughs> so I've read um, Wives and Daughters, which I said is one of my favorite Victorian works, and I read recently North and South, which was really interesting. I think I would rather, I listened to that one, and I think I need to actually physically read it at some point. I feel like I would have gotten more out of it that way. So I liked it a lot. So I felt like Cranford was the next place to go. Now this book, I believe it actually says, let's look at how many pages it says it is. It says it's 257. So, but there's a lot of footnotes in here. Oh yeah, like the glossary starts at 227. 
So it's definitely less than 250 pages. So, um, and then I actually didn't know, but somebody told me that Cranford is actually a series and that this, this Cranford is only the first. So can somebody confirm that for me? I'm not really sure uh, if this is only one book of a series that Elizabeth Gaskell did on Cranford. Um, and if so, what are the other ones called? Because I've never, I have yet to, I don't know. I didn't, I thought I researched this, but me, I guess I didn't. So yeah, if somebody can confirm that for me, let me know, because I'd like to read the rest of them too, I'm sure. So that is my pick for Katie's challenge. Last but not least, we have Kate's challenge. And her challenge is a really interesting one, and it's to reread a Victorian classic. Now I had a long think about this one because, like I said at the beginning of this video, I am in a play at the beginning of October, and it actually goes through the 13th of October, so that's like half of October. Um, and I am taking that week off from work because I just know I'm going to be really tired. So I know I will have some time to read, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to pick up a Victorian novel that I'd already read and was, you know, that I had read recently because the ones that I have on my shelves that I've read, uh, I just read within the last year, sometimes within the last couple of months. So I thought about this, what I would do for this. And I decided because now that I have one cloth, cloth bound classic, you know, of course I need to start collecting these. <laughs> because, you know, why not? Why not spend all my money on books? And <laughs> so I went back on the uh, Book Depository website and I picked up Oliver Twist. And it is not here yet, but uh, Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens is a novel that I am very familiar with. I was in the musical version of Oliver, which is, you know, basically Oliver Twist but obviously not quite as in depth. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm quite familiar with that story. I have read the novel probably back in high school. So it is a reread for me, but yet it's a reread from like way back in the past. So I almost feel like it is a brand new read for me, which would make me feel a little bit better about reading it this month because I felt like if I was going to read things this month, I wanted them to be like new and exciting for me. So I wasn't really sure what to do with that challenge, although I want to complete all of the challenges. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that is my plan for Kate's challenge. And then the last challenge is a group challenge. And that is just to read a Victorian novel or, you know, parts of it by candlelight. And I've never tried this before. And I just watched Steve Donahue's uh, TBR where he is convinced and is trying to convince us that putting a bunch of candles on your nightstand is a perfect way to read an entire Victorian novel by candlelight, like six candles, that should be fine, he says. <laughs> so. I'm gonna I'm gonna test that theory and I'm gonna go to like Hallmark and Walmart and pick up some fall scented candles. Maybe not all fall scented because that could get a little overwhelming if I have six of them on my nightstand all at the same time. So maybe a couple of relatively similarly scented candles <laughs> and then some unscented ones. And we'll have a little ambiance for some of our nighttime reading. We'll see how it goes. I think that sounds fun. And lastly, we have the group challenge, which is to read two of Oscar Wilde's plays, which is thrilling to me because like I said, the importance of being earnest has a special place in my heart. I love that play. It was the first play that I saw at my, um, well, at the time, it was the future college that I was going to go to and I went to a senior day there and they performed uh, The Importance of Being Earnest in their, their tiny intimate black box theater. And it was like, it was spectacular. <laughs> and I 
just sat there just with my probably with my mouth hanging open like how did how did they do this set these actors are amazing for college kids and I was I just looked at my parents because they were there too at the time and I was like okay I need to go to this school okay all right I, we're gonna work, make this work right <laughs> so <laughs> and and they did and I was I was involved in the theater and it was a wonderful experience <laughs> So I am all for rereading or watching an adaptation of The Importance of Being Earnest. And um, and I've also seen uh, A Woman of No Importance and my the local theater company that I sometimes do uh, productions with. They performed The Importance of Being Earnest a few years ago. I was not in it, but I saw it and a lot of my friends and um, actually at the time, my uh, well now ex-boyfriend but before he was my boyfriend <laughs> he was uh in that one as well and very funny and uh that was kind of my first notice of him <laughs> and um so yeah it was uh those two and oscar wilde are just really dear to my heart and i just love him so much <laughs> so um i'm hoping to be able to participate in that if i can't read them I would like to at least watch the adaptation of The Importance of Being Earnest that I have, uh, which is the um, Rupert Everett version, which is hilarious. Rupert Everett is just a gem. So there you go, friends. This was a very long and rambly Victober TBR video, <laughs> and I probably bored you all to death, but uh, I hope that you are planning to participate in Victober. I have a couple of other things that I'm going to be reading outside of Victober, hopefully, but uh, for the most part, it's going to be all Victorian literature all the time. And I'd really like to know what you plan on reading. Have you read any of the books on my TBR? And uh, if so, I'd like to hear your thoughts about it. And until then, I'm going to drink some coffee and go do more laundry that's back in the back behind where you can see because there's a lot of it because I haven't been home very much lately and uh, we will see you in the next video bye friends